Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Zebra HZ. This is video five, and today we're talking about the oscillator lower panel, so down over here. So let's go to a, a new preset or an init preset, and then down over here on the bottom left, we have OSC1. So let's go ahead and click that. So today we're talking about this little square down here, these settings, a little bit about the editor, and then this green and red section over here. So the first thing that I want to introduce to you is that in Zebra, what we kind of are doing is wavetable synthesis, but it's referred to as a wave set. So we have 16 different frames down here of different waves that we can morph and blend into each other. So by that, let's go to frame number one here and let's alt right click and make a little note here and kind of drag this in a certain different way, kind of to deviate from this saw wave. So we have something kind of like this now. And this shape here is going to reflect what's in the oscilloscope. And now we have one change out of this full 16. And in later videos, we're going to be showing you how to morph, how to change these, and what are the different modes, and so on and so forth. But I do want you to be aware that this is kind of like wavetable synthesis here, and you can customize and draw your own types of shapes. So back to an init preset here. If we look here on this OSC module preset, it's really cool because we have a lot of different things we can choose from. So there's already pre-installed different wavetables or wave sets, depending on how you want to see that, already installed here. So for example, Bell's Flipper is kind of cool, right? So it kind of simulates bell sounds. And we can select this uh, Bell's Flipper here and kind of toggle through these frames over here. And then also what I do want to point out is here, once we're kind of moving through these, take a look right up here at the top and we can see that it's moving an integer value. So one, two, three, four, there's really no decimal points, right? So that's going to be different from here as opposed to moving this wave here as we can have incremental values here. And then with this menu here, we can left click like we just did and we can go through this different folder here and kind of see what we like here. Or for example, we can always right click here and we have all these same options here, but we have a couple extra stuff here. So if we make something that we like, we can copy this here. And then we can also go to oscillator number two and then right click this again and hit paste. So now we have the same wave set and the settings on the different on another oscillator. So kind of useful in that sense there. And if we right click here again, we can always save the oscillator one settings or we can show in the Explorer as far as where this file is saved at. So I did want to point that out before we move on here. So next thing up here is going to be under this waveform. So the first one is geomorph, kind of what we're doing and changing the waveform. And if we select this, we have four choices, right? We have geomorph, we have spectromorph, geoblend, and spectroblend. In the next video, we're going to be talking about each different form here and why we want to use one over another and what they all do and how they all work. But for now, just kind of notice that they are right over here and you have four different choices. To the right of this, we have this soft here. It's not necessarily labeled, but I do want to show you what this does here. So let's go back to an init preset here. So we have our default saw wave. And for this example, now when it's on soft, which is for the most part what you should stay in, but take a look up here at the top range, right? So right about 20K, it's going to be cutting off pretty significantly as far as amplitude goes. And we have a little bit of tail end remainder, a little bit above 20K. However, if we change this from soft to crisp, take a look what happens now. So we can see that there's a lot more amplitude higher up on the harmonics up here, and it sounds a little bit more crisp, I guess you would say. But keep in mind, this can introduce some aliasing, so if you're using this, kind of be aware of that. And you can see a pretty different right over here on this graph right over there. So moving on from the soft and crisp, we have norm, which is for normalization. So back to an init preset here. So normalizing is basically taking the low level waves and bringing those up to zero dB if this knob is at 100%. So let's take a look again here at this spectrum view and see how that changes the sound. So this is at zero normalization. Then 100. Back to zero. Back to 100. So this is very telltaling in how it's changing, right? The brighter these lines are, the louder this, the harmonics are going to be to us. And you have all the values in between to change those if you'd like to. So moving on from there, we have res, which is the resolution. So this is basically the time it takes to morph in between the different waveforms. So for this example, let's go back to an init preset. And on the oscillator module preset, let's go ahead and select bells flipper. So we had this one before, right? 
So let's say we want to blend and more kind of morph between these and have like a kind of a wavetable vibe going, right? So up here on the oscillator, we have the wave knob. So let's go ahead and select none and let's select maybe LFO one or LFO two actually. Let's get a brand fresh new LFO and let's go to LFO two for this. So we know the LFO two is just changing this wave, right? So it's going kind of fast. So let's slow this down a little bit. Let's go maybe to one second here. Maybe go to 10 seconds here. So let's go to re-trigger for the gate. So we have this basic morphing and moving in between these wave shapes, I guess, or these frames right over here, right? So with this res here, if we change this value here, We're kind of slowly morphing in between these frames. And for a lot of the times, if you have the res a little bit lower, you might actually get a better transition between the waves. Because keep in mind, these are all individual waveforms, right? And it's blending these two or these multiple wave frames together. And it actually sounds very smooth. But for most cases here, really, if you double click this here at five, it's for the most part gonna be fine. And then next up here, we have this key S, which is the key scaling. So if we go back to an init preset here, this by default comes at 100, and this is basically mapping the oscillator, so the MIDI notes to the oscillator pitch, right? So if we double, or double click, it's gonna go back to 100, but if we put this back to zero, like this, something like that, and we hit notes, they're all gonna be the same pitch. So if you have perfect semitones for every single note, which is basically what we're always doing, then you want to keep this at 100. And it's gonna function how it normally would. However, what's kind of cool, you can also go into the negative territory. So if we went something like negative 100, something like this, then basically our keyboard is gonna be basically flipped, right? So the higher you ascend in notes and semitones, it's just going to be lower tone. So the higher you go on the keyboard, the lower pitch you're gonna get. <laughs> it's very interesting and it goes all the way to negative 200 to positive 200. But for most parts, you probably wanna keep this at 100, but it's good to know that something like that is there and available in case you need to change it or do something with it like that. So next up here, we have key scale and gain. So this is pretty cool because basically what we can do is we can tell our keyboard how loud to play certain notes, right? And what's also nice is we can basically say, from this point on, don't play any volume for these notes. We're gonna have another oscillator do that. So as we're playing notes here, right? Let's drag this all the way down. And there's gonna be a point where I'm playing notes here, right? Let's find our, uh, wherever we're playing our notes at. Yeah, so right over here, right? So we see that we're inputting MIDI, but it's gonna be somewhere down here where the volume is all the way at the bottom, right? As soon as we start bringing this up, then down over here, is where it's gonna be cutting off. And here's where it's kind of starting to increase in volume. So what we can do with that is, once we have our mouse, we're kind of hovering over this, we can see that on the display here, what note this is targeting. So if we want to do something really flat, so let's go maybe to C2, right? All the way vertical here, and this top one's gonna to be C2 as well. So what that means is, as, as we're going here, this, First C right over here, right? This is gonna be completely muted, right? Cause that's the one we targeted. But as soon as we go to C sharp, that's where, that's where we're gonna hear this. So what's cool, let's go to mute for this first lane and oscillator number two, let's select this here, go to oscillator two. And for this, let's go to a preset of, let's say a sine tree. So we just have a sine wave. So if we look to oscillator number one, this is the shape that we were doing, right? So from C2 and C2 and on, right? So from C2 and on, we're gonna hear notes and below that we're not gonna hear notes. So if we did something like this in the inverse on oscillator number two, so we grabbed this part and went all the way down, bring all these down as well, right? And bring this all the way over to C2 right here and then this one back like that. So we're kind of doing an opposite shape here. So if we're going to our keyboard, So we don't hear anything on C sharp here. Now on the other one, 
we are, but we're not hearing anything on C. So what that means, if we have both of these unmuted here, and we're kind of going through the, through the uh, keyboard, So basically what we've done is we split the oscillators based on this key scale. So oscillator number one is not going to be playing anything below this point here. And it starts to play up here, whereas oscillator number two plays only up here. And then it stops playing where oscillator one takes over. So that way we're splitting our keyboard between two different oscillators. So it's kind of an interesting thing to wrap your mind around, but it's kind of cool to know that option is there and we can do something like that. Now these are harsh cuts, right? So vertical stuff, but you can always do small little angles and kind of have maybe lower notes a little quieter as you play them or higher notes quieter it really depends on what you want to do with your patch but it's good to know that this graph is here so back to an init preset back to oscillator number one next up we have velocity scale so this is kind of in the same ballpark as we have this key scale gain but this has to do with velocity so for example let's say we did a couple notes like this right and these are our notes and these are this is our velocity down over here so we have the first one kind of low and let's kind of step it up a little bit like that right so the first one's pretty low velocity. The last one's pretty at the at the very maximum velocity. And the last two here in the center are kind of just going upwards in velocity, right? So if we did something like brought this all the way down like this and like this, right? And kind of maybe had like a linear kind of curve. We can see that this increases in volume. And what we can also do is we can do something similar like this, right? So if we want to say that at velocity value 60, if you hit th that value or below that, you're not gonna hear any tones, anything above that, it's gonna start increasing in the volume. So keep in mind that the vertical here is gonna be our gain and the horizontal is gonna be the velocity, right? So we can see the numbers down over here from zero here to 27. So these two here were not triggered, right? Cause they were gonna be somewhere below this threshold here. And if we bring these up here, That's where we're going to start hearing them. So yeah, it's kind of interesting concept here with these two. You can always split them with the key scale and do some interesting stuff with the velocity and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd mention these here because they are kind of important and it might be a little bit easy to overlook or something like that. But uh, yeah, so that's the end of this video here. In the next one, we're going to be diving into this editor here because there's lots of stuff to cover as far as the different modes here with geomorph, spectral morphs, geoblend, spectral blend, so on and so forth. All the commands and shortcuts and how we're going to be making our own waveforms and wave sets and all that stuff. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.